Okay everybody, so here we are again. Um, today we are going to look at chapter 5.1. Uh, that is the end of World War II in Europe. So this video will be an introduction to the chapter. Alright? And so before we begin, make sure you have what you need. Uh, you have your physical handout so that you can take notes. Remember that you should pause the video to take notes uh, at any point in which you you know you need to slow down uh, so don't just leave your notes there and not do anything about it uh, if you don't have the hard copy you should be taking it down on a piece of full sketch paper or something similar all right uh, it is the act of listening and taking down that is going to help you to learn and to retain the content uh, you should also be re well rested and your mind should be alert please do not do this at 1 a.m in the morning that is not going to help you Okay, uh, so without further ado, let's go. Okay, we are looking here at Germany's defeat in World War II. I would like to point out that there are two chapters about uh, the end of World War II. When we are talking about Germany, it is important to remember that we are talking about World War II in Europe. Alright, so we will not be covering the Pacific Theatre in this chapter, even though it is related. Uh, World War II, just a quick recap, remember it is 1939 to 1945, uh, this is a critical date, you must memorize this, there is no two ways about it, okay? So, in terms of the timeline, remember from the start of Sec 3, we have been looking at, uh, we started from post-World War One. we looked at the Treaty of Versailles, the League of Nations, then we looked at how Hitler came to power, and then we looked at Hitler's rule, and we know that at the tail end of Hitler's rule, he wanted to build a greater Germany and that is how he was expanding and expanding and ultimately he triggered World War I, uh, sorry, World War II. Um, and we also know that was in 1939. In 1945, by 1945, Nazi Germany has been defeated. Um, this is of course a critical event of the 20th century and that is what we are going to study. Uh, this is the overview of the chapter. In terms of what we are learning, the storyline is of course about World War II, but uh, in terms of cause and effect, what we are looking at is the reasons for the defeat of Germany. There are three main reasons, the entry of the USA. Uh, we can think of them as the good guys. Uh, here we have the bad guys, which is Germany uh, and the mistakes that it made, as well as everyone else. Okay, um, The USA might have been the MVP, but the other countries specifically, what, who we are going to look at is we are going to look at Britain and the USSR. Okay, how else um, did they contribute to this? A quick note, uh, the Allies, USA, Britain, USSR, uh, also France, okay, all these are the Allied countries. Um, Germany's side is called the Axis, okay, the Axis powers, which is basically uh, Germany, Japan, at one point Italy, okay, so that is what we're going to look at. Okay, so this is the big question. What brought about Germany's defeat? Previously, we looked at there are three factors, but out of those three factors, which is then the most important one, okay, we also need to look at what is the turning point of World War II because um, this will be able to help us to answer essay questions which look at the most important reason as well as um, who was most responsible, okay? Um, of course, content knowledge also, how does the actions of each nation affect the outcome? Okay, so um, essentially what it is saying is that you need to look at all the different countries. So USA, Germany, okay, Britain, USSR, okay, you need to look at the actions, actions, so on and so forth, okay. You need to look at the interaction and ultimately decide for me which is the most important. Um, some context, everybody, let's have a look at this. Uh, just so we are clear, this is, of course, Germany. This is the... Oh, my bad. That is not the UK. I should include the whole thing. This is the UK. Or oh, we are talking about the Britain. The USA is to the west, across the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, obviously, we have France, Poland, okay, uh, all these are what we call 
um, the Baltic states, whereas this is the USSR. Uh, let me just remind you that here, these are the Soviet satellite states. Uh, and they fall under Soviet control. Soviet meaning the USSR. <coughs> so these are the main actors that we are talking about. More terms, important terms to know. Um, Germany fights on two sides. Okay, So this is Western Europe. And whereas this is Eastern Europe. So here, when we talk about the Western Front and the Eastern Front, what do I mean? Uh, this is what I mean. This is the war front. So this is the Western Front. Uh, this is the Eastern Front. Whoever's uh, essentially the Soviets are the one fighting on the East and uh, Britain and France are the ones fighting on the West. Okay. There are, of course, uh, other theaters of war, but this is what we are primarily concerned with. So what we're going to do in this lesson is just to outline what is World War II about. First, you need to know. So we know that the previous chapter, we stopped here, right? Germany invades Poland. Okay. And at this point, Germany is the strongest fighting force in the world. Okay. Soldier for soldier, tank for tank, they are the best. Okay. And so what happens from September 1939 until June 1940 is that uh, Germany sweeps across the whole of Western Europe. Uh, they are uncontested. I mean, they are contested, but they find very little resistance. Um, the German strategy of Blitzkrieg, if you know what Blitzkrieg is, it is lightning war, okay? Um, sweeps across Western Europe, and they basically take the whole of Western Europe. Uh, the Allies are pushed further and further back. What is happening on the East, you might ask? Uh, nothing, because of the Nazi-Soviet non-aggression pact. So the first point we have is June 1940. Uh, at the Battle of Dunkirk, uh, you can Google that. It is quite a moving story. Um, this marks the point where Germany con controls Western Europe. Uh, oh, sorry, there's a typo. It should be left standing. Okay, um, so by June 1940, the first nine months of the war, it sees Germany just taking names and kicking ass, okay? And and we, I'm not glorifying Germany. I'm just telling you what happens, okay? And after that, so you might ask what's happening in between June 1940 to June 1941. We have the Battle of Britain, where uh, Hitler's uh, air force, the Luftwaffe, uh, tries to bomb the heck out of Britain, but they do not succeed, okay? Uh, at the same time, by June 1941, uh, Hitler breaks his agreement with Stalin and he launches Operation Barbarossa, which is, of course, doomed to fail because nobody invades Russia and succeeds, okay? Uh, but what do we see from this slide is that we see... Uh, it looks like the Nazis are winning, like they are going to win World War II, okay? So now we can say the Nazis are trending upwards. Then something else happens. This is a critical event. I would say that this is one of the major turning points of the war. Japan attacks Pearl Harbor. Okay, uh, This is, of course, in the Asian theater. This happens in the Pacific. Uh, Pearl Harbor is in Hawaii. What is the effect of this, though? The effect is now that the USA has formally entered the war. Previously, the USA was not part of the war. But right now, it is a formal combatant, which means that it is sending soldiers, sending troops. Okay, what it means is the might of the U.S. military machine is now in World War II. Okay, so now the 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 odds have shifted. Okay, and so uh, of course the USA is, is caught unawares by this attack. They are not ready to commit fully into the war yet, but this forces their hand. Uh, what happens is that the Japanese then sweep down across the rest of Asia. However, by June 1942, the Battle of Midway is a critical naval battle in which uh, the Japanese advance is stopped. And now we have an Allied counterattack. Okay, the momentum of the fight swings. At the same time, in Europe, this is on the Eastern Front. Okay, uh, the Soviets uh, marshal their resources. The battle, of course, is this huge tank battle uh, where the Soviet counteroffensive pushes, starts to push the um, the Nazis back. Okay, previously they were um, stuck. Not not so much stuck, but there was no clear progress. Okay, this is the turning point where the Nazis are starting to be pushed back. 
So by 1943, we see that uh, the Nazis are losing momentum, they're losing steam, okay? Um, the, the final nail in the coffin, we can say, is on D-Day 6 June 1944, uh, Battle of Normandy. What happens is that there is a huge Allied counter-invasion of Nazi-held Europe. This is what you see when you watch HBO, uh, Band of Brothers, which everybody should watch. Okay? Uh, you can also watch Saving Private Ryan. Um, so, what we see is that this shows that clearly the Allies, uh, they, they, they are on the offensive. Okay? They are counter-attacking. And by being 1945, Germany surrenders, Hitler commits suicide. Uh, so this is where World War II in Europe ends. Okay? However, however, it has not, World War II in totality has not ended yet because uh, in Asia, we know that the war is still going on. And it only ends with the dropping of the atomic bombs, Little Boy and Fat Man on Nagasaki and Hiroshima. And only on the 15th of August does uh, Emperor Hirohito announce that uh, the war is over and VJ Day, which is uh, Victory Over Japan Day, is celebrated. That is where uh, World War II is. The reason why we are talking about both uh, the Pacific as well as the European theatres of war. Sorry, I forgot to explain that. Theatres of war. Basically, where the war is, uh, the stage on which the war is taking place. Okay? We refer to them as the European theater, okay, or we can, or the Japanese one, we can say the Pacific theater, okay. So I was saying the reason why we look at both is because they are interlinked. Most importantly, because the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor means that now the Americans are also attacking the Germans, okay. Um, so I, uh, in this video, there is also a link that I posted in the commentish thingy. Um, go and watch Crash Course World History. It is very interesting. Um, it covers stuff which is not in the curriculum, but I feel it's definitely worth listening to. Okay. Um, so that is it. Uh, please continue to watch the rest of the videos um, to as we pick up more about why World War II ended the way it did. All right. Uh, so now here's the joke of the day. Um, so there was one time I went scuba diving. And it was very fun. But it was uh, it was slightly stressful because in the end I ran out of oxygen. I guess you could call it a breathtaking experience. <laughs>